Odyssey of the Seas is the final ship in Royal Caribbean's Quantum class. Technically, the ship is in the Quantum Ultra class, incorporating the cruise line's latest and greatest ideas of what a cruise ship can be. Coming in at 168,000 gross tons and carrying 4,200 passengers at double occupancy, Odyssey isn't the largest vessel in the Royal Caribbean fleet. That goes to ships like Wonder of the Seas within the Oasis class. However, for those who may be overwhelmed by the size of the biggest Oasis class ships, or who love the Royal Caribbean experience, and a trip aboard Odyssey of the Seas fits their schedule or budget, then the ship may be a terrific option for their next cruise. Just a little disclosure, I was invited aboard Odyssey of the Seas for its naming ceremony and inaugural cruise at no charge. Here is my insight on the ship, including what you can expect, what to do, and things to know about sailing. First and foremost was how the cruise ship feels more boutique and modern than others that have sailed. How can a nearly 170,000 ton ship feel boutique? For one, there are fewer wide open spaces on the ship. If you sailed Royal Caribbean before, you are likely used to the large Royal Promenade that runs through the middle of the ships. It's wide and airy with shops and restaurants along the sides. On Odyssey of the Seas, there's a Royal Esplanade. However, it's a bit smaller with narrower walkways and a more winding path instead of just cutting straight through. The result is a more intimate feel, like a winding street instead of a multi-lane highway. As well, the ship is also more contemporary in style, as you would expect from a brand new vessel. Colors from the interior of the ship to the staterooms are lighter and muted. I felt the colors mixed with the design throughout Odyssey are beautiful, giving the feel of luxury, but still approachable. Artwork is present throughout the entire ship, a common theme on Royal Caribbean vessels. This includes some spectacular sculptures, including the hanging glass chandelier that descends from deck five down through the main dining room. The two-story sculpture of a cat playing with balls of yarn at the back of the ship near the seaplex is also a fun touch. Of course, entertainment and activities are always a major focus of Royal Caribbean, and that's no different aboard Odyssey. The aforementioned seaplex dominates the back of the ship. Inside is a fully enclosed area that houses a basketball court that doubles as the bumper car arena. Circling around the court is an assortment of arcade games and hangout spots for kids. On the upper deck overlooking the court are more games for families or kids to play, along with a Playmaker sports bar showing sports from all over the world. With this setup, mom and dad can have a drink and a bite to eat while also being able to watch the kids play bumper cars or head to the nearby Zone Zero, which is a virtual reality attraction. Parents can do their thing while the kids play, yet still all be around each other. Head to the very back of the ship and there's even more to do. Here you'll find the Ripcord by iFly, an enclosed skydiving experience. You'll also find the Flow Rider, the Climbing Wall, and the Sky Pad. If you have older kids, there's no doubt that this area of the ship is where they will want to spend most of their time. Now walk forward on the ship and you'll find the always popular pool deck. There are two separate pool areas in the open air along with the splash away bay for younger kids. Odyssey also has a gorgeous solarium offering a quieter covered spot for adults to lounge in the sun without having to worry about wind or smaller kids. You'll also see a few other things that you don't have on most Royal Caribbean ships. First are casitas on the pool deck. The small spots offer cover for shade along with lounge chairs in a more private spot that's still close to the action. There is also the North Star, which you cannot miss from the top deck. This viewing pod rises up over the ship, putting you about 300 feet above the water. If you were scared of heights, it might not be for you but it will offer stunning views. Entertainment extends indoors as well. Of course, there are all the favorites like the casino, the theater, nightclubs, the spa, and the music hall, which has live music. But the real can't miss is the 270 theater. During the day, this spot serves as a two-story lounge area with sweeping views around the back of the ship. There are tables and comfy seating and even a bar for you to enjoy. 
During the evening shows, however, it transforms. 18 projectors put up a video backdrop for performances. A multi-dimensional stage rises and falls to provide depth for the shows. And six screens, each attached to a six-axis robotic arm, rise, fall, tilt, and circle around to add even more to the show. During my cruise, I watched the book and I was blown away by the performance. Aerialists dropped out of the ceiling. Performers appeared and disappeared into the floor. And it was all accompanied by a multimedia background that I have never seen anything like before. What about food? The lineup includes the latest and greatest from the Royal Caribbean group of restaurants. Starting with the free options, you have the main dining room and the Windjammer buffet. There's also El Loco Fresh serving Mexican food for lunch, the Cafe at 270, which has small bites, Sereno's for a slice of pizza and Cafe Promenade also makes an appearance. There's also a smaller second buffet at the Solarium Bistro. As is par for Royal Caribbean, however, there's a strong emphasis on that specialty dining. Here, you'll find the most options. Choices include Japanese food at Izumi, fine dining at Coastal Kitchen or Chef's Table, eclectic meals at Wonderland, and dinner and a show at Teppanaki. Grab a steak at Chop's Grill, or you can also have home-style Italian at Giovanni's. Thirsty? You'll also find a number of bars around the ship that have become mainstays in the Royal Caribbean fleet. This includes the Schooner Bar, the Lime and Coconut, and Boleros. Bionic Bar, where robots mix the drinks for you, and Crown and Compass are also on Odyssey. And if you can't live without your coffee, you'll be happy to know there is also a Starbucks on board the ship. Bottom line, Royal Caribbean is known for packing a lot onto its ships and Odyssey is no exception. There's a myriad of things to do, places to eat, and it's all wrapped up in a modern style that's fun and inviting while also feeling a bit upscale. It's also a bit more contained compared to the size of the biggest Royal Caribbean ships making it ideal for those who are overwhelmed by massive vessels. So what really stood out to me on board Odyssey of the Seas? There were several things that jumped out as must-sees aboard the ship. From the colors to the styling to the artwork, I loved the decor and the design around the ship. Everything was modern yet approachable and comfortable. Some older ships in the fleet can feel a bit dated in their design. That's certainly not the case here. And I also like that in addition to feeling contemporary, it also felt more adult in style. While it's definitely made for families, you won't feel like you're on a ship built to cater only to children. The Seaplex at the back of the ship is definitely built for kids, but parents were also considered in the design and it shows. While kids will want to hang out in this area and the rest of the back of the ship, where the climbing wall and the sky pad are located, there are plenty of spaces for adults to enjoy. There's playmakers, but also seating overlooking the sport court, so the kids can go play while mom and dad enjoy a drink or a bite to eat while still being together as a family. Odyssey of the Seas also has some fantastic shows that I thoroughly enjoyed. The book in 270 takes full advantage of the technology in the theater to put on a show that's unlike anything I've ever seen. In my opinion, it is they can't miss. I also watched The Effectors in the main theater. Now, while the main show itself wasn't really my favorite, there are some amazing effects that I think you have to see. This includes a moment when dozens of drones fly over the audience in a synchronized display. I'm a big fan of Odyssey, but there were some things that I think could have been a little bit better on board the ship. On the ship, space is limited, but cruise lines do a good job of still giving a feeling of openness. On Odyssey of the Seas, I thought there could be more open space still. For instance, the Royal Esplanade is a bit smaller than I'm used to seeing, and it just felt tighter. The pool deck also felt more cramped. Between packing so much on top of the ship, including the casitas and deck chairs and loungers and the North Star, it just didn't feel as open. I will always argue for more included options when it comes to dining. On this ship, it seemed like for dinner, you either had the buffet or the main dining room. There was no in between. There are some other included spots to eat, but they tend to be snacks instead of meals, 
like Cafe Promenade, and for lunch, El Loco Fresh was included, but it closed by dinner time. My opinion is that having another included dining option, especially for dinner, would be a really nice touch. During my time on the ship, I noticed a few things that could make your trip aboard Odyssey even better. Here's what to know. One thing that got a lot of people confused, including me, is that the elevator buttons, both in the elevator and in the lobby to call an elevator, they're all touchless. So instead of pushing it with your finger, you simply put your finger close to it and hold it there to select it. Truth be told, it's a great idea, but it doesn't always work perfectly. You have to put your finger near it and then pause for a second or two for it to register on the button. There's plenty to do on Odyssey, but unfortunately, you need to plan ahead for a lot of things. Whether due to popularity or for crowd planning purposes, Royal Caribbean requires reservations on things like specialty restaurants and the theaters, including 270 on board the ship. In addition, I noticed that activities like Ripcord and North Star were also regularly full. Now, in full disclosure, I was able to snag a seat at 270 without a reservation, but the Daily Planner does say that they are required. The good news, reservations are easy. You can do it within seconds in the Royal Caribbean app on board. It's just something that you need to remember to do. So if you're scared of heights, then maybe avoid it, but for a quick thrill, head over to the sky pad. Now there's a walkway around the huge ball that juts out over the water. Here, the path turns from the deck of the ship to glass panels that allow you to look down and see the ocean a full 16 decks below. It will definitely get the blood flowing. I've mentioned a couple times that shows in 270 are a can't miss. One tip is to head upstairs to the balcony seating to watch. Now, there's not a bad seat in the house, but in some of the lower seating, your view of the stage, which is down below the audience, can be somewhat obscured by other people. Instead, the upper seating gets a full view of all parts of the stage without worrying about those in front. Two of the big attractions on the ship are the North Star Observation Pod and the Ripcord Skydiving Simulator, but there are charges, so be aware. During our cruise, I was told that the charge for Ripcord by iFly was $49 per person. For North Star, the pricing works a little differently from what I was told. Staff said that if the ship is underway, then there's a $29 charge for a ride. That's because the pod will go out over the side of the ship on a longer ride. But if the ship is in port, then taking a ride is free. The only difference? In port, the staff told us, the pod only goes straight up. During my cruise, one moment that seemed to make everyone blush was when they walked into the solarium. There, you will see this ultra-realistic sculpture of a woman in a bathing suit sitting on a float in the pool. Until you get right up to it, it's hard to tell if it's an actual person or a fake. The realism is amazing down to the wrinkles in her feet. But what might make you blush is the angle this sculpture is positioned. Her backside is pointed right toward the entrance of the solarium. So as you make your way in, you're getting a full view from a very compromising angle. One of the popular additions to Royal Caribbean ships are casitas on the pool deck. They offer a little more space and shade compared to the typical lounger. If you want one, then you'll need to head to the lime and coconut bar for a reservation when sailing on Odyssey. I'd suggest getting there early if you'd like to reserve a casita. There are only a limited number available. Finally, anyone who has cruised knows that on older ships, plug space is at a premium. That's why I always suggest bringing along an outlet adapter to give you a few more outlets. On Odyssey of the Seas, it's not a bad idea to bring one, but if you don't, you will be okay. My cabin had two outlets plus two USB charging ports, and then there was a third outlet next to the bed. That should be plenty to get anyone through a week-long cruise. Now, in my opinion, Royal Caribbean has hit another home run with Odyssey of the Seas. The ship is modern, beautiful, and packed a ton on board. Whether you are a family sailing with kids, or a couple traveling on your honeymoon, or anything in between, 
I think it would be hard not to enjoy this ship. It offers broad appeal that offers a feel of luxury without feeling stuffy. Now, I will say that I prefer the Oasis class over the Quantum Ultra class simply due to the more space on the ship. My one real complaint is that the interior promenade and the pool deck could feel more cramped than usual. That said, I found it to be just a quibble. If you have an upcoming trip aboard Odyssey of the Seas, then you should be excited. If you were trying to determine if you should sail on Odyssey for an upcoming cruise, then I would say it is a definite yes.